Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You guys have absolutely been loving the Daryl Brooks topic lately, so we're going to go ahead and get straight into Jennifer Darrow and her true feelings about the man. Now, she's always been mediator. She's always been, in my opinion, kind of just walked over by him left and right, but she's finally gotten a chance to speak. She had to take him out of the courtroom and mute him. But obviously, I feel like the best option would be to gag him and just have him face to face. It would just it would be wonderful. It would be spectacular. I don't know why she didn't think about that. I mean, shit, if I was the bailiff, I would have took a I would have drove down to Walmart and got one of them little gag toys or go to the sex store, buy a little, you know, a little let's go. We'll figure this out. I mean, we can improvise. We can improvise. We can figure this out. Oh, and check this out. I burnt the shit out of myself today. Look at that shit. Man, I, I'm so mad. I'm planning on getting tattoos, so hopefully, let's just hope I don't burn myself too much more. And super thanks me if you, if you want to put money toward the tattoo fund. Anyways, let's get straight into this. And in my almost 11 years on the bench, I've presided over dozens and dozens of cases that have gone to trial. To say that this has been the most challenging of my career would be an understatement. I have done my best, I believe, to be fair, to be unbiased, to protect the rights of not only Mr. Brooks as it relates to this trial. She was a little too fair. She was a little too unbiased. Did she she seemed like one of those mothers that, you know, they have a badass kid and she just doesn't know what to do with them, so she just kind of tries to plead with him. But no, Billy, don't do that. No, mom, fuck you. And then he just smacks her in the face. That's the type of relationship that I was getting with Daryl Brooks. You can have authoritarian you can have authority and not have a mistrial, but you know, you know, I'll, you know, she was good, but yeah, it definitely, we can tell, Miss Doro, it was giving you a bit of a challenge there. But those of witnesses, um, those of the victims, and of course. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Somebody screamed at me. Her name is Judge Doro. Don't, don't disgrace the judge or, or don't disrespect the judge. I'm not trying to disrespect her, bro. I just said Miss Doro because that's how I talk. <laughs> the jurors. Prior to the court taking an early lunch this morning, um, a couple of things happened that I think worth, are worth making a further record about going to the beginning of this morning, where it is true, I did not do my usual practice of asking if there were any preliminary issues that the parties wanted to address. Um, in my mind, I wanted to get to the witnesses, um, we were at that stage. I knew there were a number of witnesses to be called, and I wanted to ensure that it was done effectively um, for all of the reasons that are stated in 90611. And I thought it was reasonable at the time to simply take up issues dealing with legal matters at a break. That's why I brought the jury in. During the jury coming in, uh, Mr. Brooks continued to talk make statements, the record speaks for itself. I'm not gonna, frankly, I couldn't tell you everything that was said at that time. I mean, if he was actually in this courtroom right at this very moment, he would have interrupted about three, four times at this point. So like, literally, there's no way to move forward. And the more you watch him, the more you're realizing he's not even trying to argue his case. He's just more trying to stall and destroy. He's just trying to destroy all the proceedings to hopefully cause a mistrial, I guess. But like, you you tell me, if you have a mistrial, don't you just go to trial again? So it's like, bro, you're still going to be found guilty eventually. What you want to do? Are the cells better when you're not actually in prison? Is that it? Because Is the food better? All the ex-cons, hit me up. Let me know. Because that shit, like, what... Why stall that much unless you were just having the most amazing cell? He must have had TV, real good food, good outside food, all of that. But yeah, it's crazy. You know, he was just here to stall the whole way, for sure. At this point, I think it's important to note, though, it's the tone, the demeanor, the decorum, or frankly, the lack thereof for many days on end throughout this trial. 
it has become apparent that when the jury comes into this courtroom and leaves this courtroom that Mr. Brooks makes disparaging remarks about the integrity of this court, of these proceedings, and of other parties in the courtroom. He repeatedly references things such as subject matter jurisdiction. I almost cut it. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I almost cut it and said, what about the subject matter jurisdiction, though? You know, it hasn't been proven for the record. For the record, it hasn't been proven, the subject matter jurisdiction. Just in case, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what subject matter jurisdiction means anymore. It's just like a, a nothing word to me. He said it so many times. It's just like... What? It's white noise. Which there is a written decision that I have filed in this case. It is very clear this court has subject matter jurisdiction over this case. This is See? Not civil. See, Mr. Earl, he was trying to what, what they call gaslight you. He's used to gaslighting working. So it didn't work because you're in fucking court. And he was a bit, you know, he was a bit thrown off. He was like, huh, that's odd. I thought, you know, all bitches are stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was saying. He's like, I thought I could manipulate everybody. Yeah, no, complete, complete piece of shit. Like, out of this world. He really thought he could gaslight the judge. Subject matter jurisdiction over and over and over. Case. This is not a case in federal court, for example, where subject matter jurisdiction sometimes becomes an issue for things like whether there's a federal question that's involved. Um, every now and again in a criminal case, subject matter jurisdiction is a type of issue that comes up, but not under the circumstances here. I'm not going to rehash everything that's in my decision. I stand by that decision. Why is she even explaining this? Like, why is she explaining subject matter jurisdiction unless it's for the record? Because clearly he just doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just spouting out bullshit. He probably got his hands on the phone or something and searched out Wikipedia, how to win court case. And then as some shit popped up was like, oh, well, if subject matter jurisdiction isn't proven, it could be a mistrial or some stupid shit. Like, come on, bro. The record has been made abundantly clear that Mr. Brooks does not believe this court has jurisdiction. His, re his objections have been noted, well documented by the record that's being taken down. I know from my experience, not only as a judge, but as a litigator, that once that objection is made, it's preserved. I even stated at one point, I think there's a standing objection. I will note that for the record. Um, Mr. Brooks continues, in my opinion, to bring this issue up in front of the jury to distract, to delay, and to call into question the integrity of these proceedings. Frankly, maybe to create an issue on appeal if he is convicted. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't even think he was thinking that far. Appeal? What are you talking about? You can appeal? That was probably his question. Or maybe the lawyer that he, that he had before he fired him kind of brought appealing up because he knew his ass would lose. But, I mean, what are you going to appeal? There's no, like, unless you got the whole jury to be like, I'm not sure anymore. This guy really has me on the fence. I brought him... I should state it this way. He is not in this courtroom presently because on day 15 of this trial, and specifically this morning, right, we have a history of disruptions, delay, interruptions, disrespectful behavior, a common courtesy, I think that just as a human being we all would expect, have not been followed. I have... It's evidently made it. Jeez, that ring on her finger is a fucking stone. You could pick it up and bust somebody's head with that ring. That that man loves that woman. Sheesh. It is evident to this court that when there is a ruling that Mr. Brooks disagrees with. He loses it. Uh, whether it be an evidentiary ruling, um, whether it be on subject matter jurisdiction, whatever it may be, that he has a pattern now of 
directly confronting the court asking for is that verified law can you prove that is that an actual law he starts debating the topic once again or he will see and this is where you not being a lawyer really comes into play because he's coming off as confrontational but he's really just asking questions he's objecting but it's not an objection he's just like excuse me ma'am back in belize we would say excuse me miss miss I, um i have a question that's all he's saying he's like miss i don't know what the fuck was what is happening um i didn't even know this evidence existed um how does that work that's all he's doing all the way through the child the trial he's disguising it as i object and and subject matter jurisdiction. He he just wants answers as to what the hell is going on because he's not a lawyer. And try to further turn us away from that by bringing up another topic. For example, just today, when the issue came up about this letter that he claims was sent to him by Erica Patterson, and I asked repeatedly for an offer of proof rather than answer the question directly, Mr. Brooks instead started talking about an exhibit the state offered into evidence yesterday. And, and from my perspective, it's he doesn't address the merits of the issues that are before this court and then tries to divert things down a different path, whether that's to delay, to disrupt, or just simply be discourteous. I think all of those words would be an accurate description of what is happening. Delay, disrupt, and be discourteous. She has a very, she has a very good, per, um, not personality, she has very good um, vocabulary, but I'd expect she was probably a lawyer before, before a judge or something very academic, but um, yeah, it's crazy. One objection or series of objections uh, that I actually went off the record, uh, not off the record, I actually <laughs> This is the best part of the video. Oh my god, everybody. He's reading the Bible. I promise you that shit's not even turned to like one of the the comforting scriptures that he would read back as a child. That's open to random. That where's that? That's on the right side. So that's New Testament. He's probably in John or some shit reading the most random shit about r randomness. I promise you, if I had a 360 camera and turned and looked, it would be nothing. It would just be some random scripture. It would be like, like, and he went to pick up the stones from the market and took it home. Because, you know, the Bible has all these, like, stories and randomness that you have to really be searching through. Bro is out here reading nothing. I promise you. Nothing inspiring. In order to try to get an offer of proof. Uh, from Mr. Brooks. And as that exchange went on, it got, from my perspective, he got louder. He got more disrespectful. I think it's fair to say his behavior was volatile. And it's because of that that I called an early lunch. And it's because of all of those things. Even when I attempt to give the warning that he will be removed upon further behavior, he immediately interrupts and says, are you holding me in contempt? <laughs> a very clear indication to this court that he is attempting and trying and actually disrupting the proceedings so that I can't make an accurate record. Like I said, it's challenging. That is why he is in the other courtroom muted so that I can make the record. And I will confirm. See, it's challenging, all right. But see, I understand where she's coming from because if you go too harsh on them and you do all this crazy shit, I could see how appeal would happen. He would get a lawyer. Please, Lord, don't let him represent himself again. I mean, it would be good for here. <laughs> we would have fun over here. But, um, you know, he would file appeal, get an actual lawyer. And all the shenanigans that happened, the, the lawyer would point out the shenanigans on the court's fault, not his fault. Now, if you gave him a bit of an iron hand here and there, you say you gagged him for the closing statements. You put a fucking ball in his mouth. Let him chew. Let, oh, just let him chew on that shit. Yeah. Fuck, you want to beat women, right? Take this down your throat. You know, do that and just talk at him. There's nothing wrong with that. That's happened before. 
I'm pretty put in the comments all all the trials where people have been gagged. Shit, I might do some right now. I might look that up myself, but I'm sure it happens. She wasn't thinking on her toes. I swear she should have gagged this guy. But yeah, it's crazy. And guys, guys, right here at this intersection, tell me if I should make a Patreon, man. If nobody really comments, I'm not really gonna make it because because you know. It's a whole other platform, and I, I just want to establish this one mainly. But YouTube really blocks a lot of shit out. So if you guys, you know, for the select few who, who wants to see the more gory shit, you know, no restrictions, let me know if it's worth it. Let me know if that's worth it. But let's get straight back into this. ...with my clerk and the bailiffs. I should have done this at the beginning, but I believe... Thank you. My clerk did confirm that they can see, they can hear, we can see... Um, as well. It is this court's opinion that Mr. Brooks is blatantly pushing the limits. All right, so basically she's saying, hey, he's a meanie. I don't like him. Pretty much, you know, in her own words. I just wish she was more, just more strong, had more strong words for him. She's a strong woman. Don't, don't, don't get that wrong. Don't get that twisted. I wish she had stronger words for him. Anyways, let's get into... You know, the rest of the situation that she has to speak about. Anyone driving a vehicle would see what's ahead. And we know from this map, right, what was ahead of him. We saw that video footage. We heard the testimony. Many police vehicles at these intersections with their lights flashing, there's no doubt in my mind that Mr. Brooks would understand a parade was going on. You can turn off my, uh, my Yeah, I mean, come on. It would take, like, I don't even want to say it, but anybody would know there's a fucking parade happening. You see police, barricades, and a bunch of people. Oh, I think that's a parade. I mean, from from 12 years, from 10 years old, from 8 years old, you know what parades look like. We also know it was not yet dark. Dusk. This was from the battalion chief who talked about when he arrived after that first alert at 439, it was not yet dark, it was dusk. I think that aids to the visibility that Mr. Brooks would have seen all of these people. This is not under cover of night. And what was that? A Ford Escape or um, 2010, 2012 or some shit? That pro that had auto lights at that point. I had a Ford twenty fourteen a few years back. That shit that shit the lights came on by themselves. I'm pretty sure that twenty ten had auto lights. So like a dark, dusk, it don't matter. He's gonna have visibility. You know what I mean? Like, come on now. It's of course downtown Waukesha. We saw city lights in many of the street lights I'm referring to in many of the videos as well that would have been on or coming on. We know just past Barstow, he strikes his first victim, Nicole White. She was with Remax Services with the hot air balloon. If anyone's seen that, we saw it in the video, that is unmistakable what that is. That would get anyone's attention. See, in all these videos, there's a, um, a few websites that, I, that I've seen where they show you all the video. And it's it's crazy. But YouTube is a little too finicky. But, um, yeah, you know, somebody had commented. I didn't really want to say it because I didn't believe it. But he really was only targeting, like, older white women, it seemed. That's what it seemed like. I think the kid was an accident. I hope the kid wasn't, I mean, man, that kid, it, it, it sucks to see it happen. But, like, I don't know what his real motive was. Maybe he was just angry at people. Maybe, like, I don't know. You guys put your reasons for why he really ran through the parade. Because that whole running from the police thing, it can't support the reason for him running through the whole parade. Like, body after body, you're adding more heat on yourself. It's not helping things. So, you have to think it's not that. If this was a mistake, if he was lost, this was his very first opportunity to stop and do the right thing after causing injury to a person. 
He didn't even kill the first he person. Did he did not stop. Right, there you go. And then, of course, the lockers are self banned. It's hard not to think about what I watched and not have this reaction. Those were images that frankly kept me up at night that I saw over and over and over. For their band director, she is a hero to me to get up on this stand to talk about. And that was Sarah Waymeyer, our Parvisio, to identify each one of her students, talk about their formation, talk about what she saw. So strong for all of you. Yeah, yeah, it's. Mr. Brooks had another opportunity to. And look at him. It's almost like, I'm sorry. It's almost like he has a smirk right there. You see? Look at his eyes looking down while he's waving that shit, smirking. Go read your Bible. What happened to your Bible? He's not reading his Bible today. <laughs> I mean, jeez. Definition of a scumbag, bro. Definition of a scumbag. I'm doing this YNW Melly case, and he's on the same shit. YNW Melly, he's over here laughing. He's over here... To, to the crowd like it seems like he's not even all there like it's crazy but daryl brooks gets on the same page as some ynw melly to me you guys go check that out man that's like my most interest right now is the ynw melly case but you know make sure you guys go over there and check that shit out but um yeah man daryl um waving that objection letter or whatever the fuck it is doing his very best to continue to disrupt things like right now, he's still in his soul. I will disrupt. I will disrupt. I will never let go. I will disrupt. That's what he's saying over and over. I promise you, the guy is relentless. You have to give him that. Stop. This wasn't you one have to isolated give him that. person that he could claim, I didn't know I struck someone. This was driving over people. What Kyle Jewell described as... The SUV went over people like they were big old speed bumps. Damn. Big old speed bumps. Fuck. The green children were injured around there. Thankfully, their physical injuries were minor. And I know I could probably spend a long time talking about the injuries of the band members. And I'm not going to go through that. They were significant. It was horrific. Like, I, again, again, six people died, or seven, six. Six people died. That doesn't mean there were life-altering changes to a lot more people. Injuries off the charts, everywhere. You know what I mean? He just ran through them. Like, you know, you want to see a car, what a car could do to some bodies? Go to the Waukesha Christmas Parade, and you would have seen some crazy shit you probably would, you've probably never seen before. You know what I mean? Like, none of them were killed. None of them were killed, but they were injured their asses off. You see how she got emotional and she said none of them were killed? That's what people always forget when they say, oh, 40 injured, six dead. And they're thinking, oh, oh, those six people. No. The six. What about those 40 injured, bro? Those are the ones that are still here with us. Those those six dead, they're, they're gone. They're, you know, they're with the maker. They're, they're, they're out of here. The 40, al the 40 alive and injured are the ones who are really feeling that shit. You know what I mean? So, yeah, always think about the injured. How injured, you know? How severe are most of the injuries? Like, that's the type of shit I'd be asking. Rest First in peace logistics. to all the people in that parade. Uh, between the band and the Blazers, that is where Kelly Graybow and her 10-year-old daughter, Adelia, were in that adorable Cindy Lou Who costume. And what struck me, and Kelly referenced this in her statement yesterday, was seeing the tires go past her head after she was hit. And Delia had major injuries as well. And then, of course, 
the footage from the Waukesha Blazers. And Jeff Rogers talked both at the trial, he testified, and he gave a statement yesterday about, again, having to come into this courtroom, talk about all of those who were with him, who were injured, and of course, little Jackson Sparks, another video that frankly is very difficult to watch and hard to unsee. I can imagine. And you have to think the judge has to go through this day in and day out. Like, sure, they give out football numbers and go to sleep, you know, quote unquote soundly. But I don't know how soundly that really is, especially definitely not for Daro. I can imagine some of the other judges, some of them real old timers who just don't give a fuck. Like the Cal Rittenhouse judge, he don't give a he don't give a damn. He'll he'll give you a football sentence real quick and go to sleep. Have a peanut butter jelly sandwich. But um, <laughs> what was I saying? Um, you know the judges have to see these gruesome pictures day in and day out. They go to work. They see all this crazy shit. You either get desensitized or that shit comes back to you and really, really messes with you. And I feel like she's getting messed with. You know she can't go to sleep. She's seeing all these people's pictures. Like eventually, I feel like she'll get desensitized to it but i mean how long has she been she said she's dozens after dozens of cases so she's done over 24 she's done damn near shit probably over 50 trials so maybe it doesn't go away you heard not only jeff but josh craner talk about what happened and josh of course being struck and then the extreme dance <laughs> I love it I think it's fair that I didn't fully understand the extent of their injuries until hearing from many of the victims yesterday I now understand why one of the girls called her aunt and said, my entire team is dead, because that's what it looked like. It was horrific. Yep. And to think of those two brave young ladies who got up during this trial to testify about what they saw, what they did, Jamie and Alyssa, Your dancers are proud of you, and because of you, justice has been served. Hell yeah. We heard from others, spectators, Deborah Lerner. And I, We need to go through all the witnesses, too, because there was a lot of witnesses, and it gives us more detail as to, like, you know, what was happening at the time of their perspective. And, I mean, perspective is everything. And when you hear certain people speak, it's like, damn, all this was happening when he barreled through? You know, because all we were focusing on was Daryl Brooks in his car. But, you know, there's all this shit happening in people's lives before he came and ran through their shit. So we definitely need to go through the, you know, the witnesses, all the, you know, all the testimonials, all that stuff. Until the next one, y'all, stay safe, stay inside. Let me know if I need to do a Patreon. I want to do a Patreon so I could just have free reign with all my videos, but I need my squad to, to let me know if that's the move because, man, I'm working almost all the time now, it feels like. But, you know, we're grinding for the future, you know what I mean? So I'll see you guys in the next one. I know you've been enjoying the Daryl Brooks, so I'll keep it coming. Until the next one, people, I love y'all. Peace.